Thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. I have something so fun to show you today. I'm going to do an art journal page in my large Ranger Dilutions art journal. And I'm going to use this kit right here. And this is for Sunflower Suzette. So this is Sunflower Suzette. There's a flower pot with the flowers. And it folds down and becomes her dress. And her head is movable also and so this becomes sunflower Suzette so I'm gonna show how to create this beautiful girl and I thought it'd be fun to bring in this this is a uh, collage sheet that I did a while back and it's for sunflower faces so I'm gonna color these and I'm gonna use these on the page as well because they're gonna just go along so well with sunflower Suzette so I'm gonna add that to my art journal page so let's get started and have some fun. And I want to start by saying the inspiration for this uh, kit came from um, an art designer in Italy named um, By Marcello. And I'm going to put the link to his YouTube channel so that you can check out where the inspiration came for this. And he is a wonderful artist, so check out his videos and uh, check out some of his inspirational artwork. So thank you so much, Marcelo, for the inspiration. The first thing you're going to do um, once you purchase this kit, it's an instant download and then you can print it. So you're going to print it on any paper you'd like. You want to use a cardstock, um, preferably 120 to 140 pound weight cardstock because that'll be nice and stiff and it'll make it movable but very um, stable. So then you're going to want to fussy cut out all your little pieces, of course. In my printer, I'm just using an inkjet printer, and I only put in one piece of cardstock at a time to print, and it works just fine. It doesn't ever um, jam the printer or anything like that. But my printer is almost out of colored ink, and I don't have another cartridge right now. So I'm just using um, a marker. You can use alcohol markers or something anything, even um, Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2, whatever you want to bump up the color if you ever have that problem where your image didn't print out quite as bright as you'd like. I mean, this is this is still cute, looks great, but I'd like my leaves to be, uh, my petals of my flower to be just a little bit brighter. So I'm just bumping them up before I cut them out. The original should print out uh, vibrant and bright if you have good ink in your printer. Another thing you can do before you cut this out is the circle behind the center of the sunflower that goes behind Sunflower Suzette. You can go in and see how that's a little bit um, shiny. What I did was use some paint pens, some just acrylic, these are Arteza acrylic paint pens, and I've gone through and bumped up those circles because they're a little glossy and so it just adds a little bit of character and dimension and it, you have to do these kind of things before you put the doll together because otherwise you won't be able to get them behind her or have it look right. So do this now and then you can also take things like Nuvo Drops. I've got a brown here. This is dark walnut and I could come in and add some dark walnut dots and that's going to just give it some little character and dimension too. There's only an edge, so most of it is behind her, so you're only going to have a little bit of an edge. So you wouldn't have to do the whole image if you want this dimensional parts to be on here. You could just add a few here and there around those edges that you know are going to show. And then let them totally, totally dry before you cut it out. And then when you pop this behind your paper doll, it's really, really going to look cool. So see how that added pops of dimension like a sunflower center has. Now the part on her body, you'll notice that there's this little piece here and that her neck is extremely long. This is going to be a hidden piece that's going to create a movable part. So her head is going to be able to tip back and forth from these two parts. So cut these two parts out separately and then I'll show you how to assemble. So on this body you want to cut out those little pieces underneath her arms and it's to me I think it's easiest to use an X-Acto knife and a self-healing mat. 
I think that's easier than scissors. And so you just want to cut out those little pieces and pop them out like that. I always go around the edges with a brush pan so you can get rid of those white edges. So use anything you want that's a brush pan. And if the outfit is yellow, then I use a yellow. You can always go around in black. Black makes it have a nice edge too. And just get rid of those white edges. So once you cut out the body and the head and that cute little piece, what you're going to want to do, there's a little circle mark and you're going to want to use a paper piercer and pierce your holes. So you're going to poke a hole in the spot at the top of the neck and then you're going to poke a hole in this little tab. And you're going to put your brad, your mini brad, through the neck first and then through this little piece like this, kind of creates like a T and then spread out your little back of your brad like that and then what you want to do is you want to put glue and I'm using art glitter glue here you want to put glue along this side and this side only of that little tab. So just on the ends of the tab. And then you're going to put your head into place where you want it. As low as you want it because you don't want it that neck to be too long. And then you just hold that down. Or you could clamp it if you have little mini clamps. So I'm taking some mini clamps and clamping that down just for a little bit just so the glue will dry. You can also just for extra reinforcement take a little bit of tape and put tape over that just on the end. You don't want to cover the rest of it in the center. That tape will just give it a little extra stability just like that. So now the head can turn and you don't see the brad. Pretty nifty. The next step is to cut across your flower pot. So right here along this inner edge you want to take your X-Acto knife and cut along that edge. And you just leave about a quarter of an inch at each end so it's separated like this. And then I always like to still take a pen and go into that edge. See I haven't done this edge yet either. Get rid of your white edges on your flower pot. And then I like to separate that and go in that edge too because it just these little details are just going to make it turn out really nice. And this pan is an Ecoline brush pan 407. It is yellow ochre, deep ochre. That's my favorite one to go around edges. Because even on this, so it's a dark brown, but you take this deep, deep ochre. I just like this color. Any brush pan works going around edges. But this one is just my all-time favorite. I use it a lot. Okay, so you want to take this, and the first thing you do is you're going to stick this flower center down into the pot like that. And then you're going to take your girl, and you're going to put that in front of that center. And you're going to put her down in the pot all the way down to where her arms kind of meet the pot like that. Just like that. Perfect. And then you can flip it over and put some glue or some tape. Either works fine. And this is going to get glued into a journal. So I'm going to go ahead and tape it. Tape is quick and easy. And it just tapes her that into place just like that. So now I'm going to take my petals and I'm going to sort out the big ones from the little ones. And there's seven little ones. 
And again, be sure you go around your edges just to get rid of that white line. Next, you're going to glue these small petals behind your girl. So you're just going to take these and you're going to put the orange end behind the flower center like that. And you just, I like to lay them out first just so that I, I get them where I want them before I glue them down. But you kind of find where you want each one to go. And then once you get them where you want them, you're just going to put a little bit of glue on the tab right here down at the end and stick it behind that center and glue them into place like that. So I'm going to go ahead and glue those petals into place. Next is to add the big petals. And what you want to do, each one has a dot. And so you're going to use your paper piercer and you're going to poke that hole in each little petal. So wherever there's a dot, paper pierce it and poke your hole. And then on the girl, right where her little gathers are right here, you're going to poke a hole all the way through to the back side. Just like that, you're going to poke your paper piercer all the way through and make a hole. Next you're going to take a brad and I'm using this jeweled brad that has butterflies in the middle of it that's kind of an orangey yellow. You could use any brad you want. I just think that one will be super cute. You want to find the two petals that have these curves because those are going to be the ones on top. So you go through, you make sure that they go like this and you're going to poke through one and then another. And then the other petals, it doesn't matter what order they go in, you just want to pick them up one at a time and add them all to the brad. So you're just going to poke that brad through all the pierced holes. Like that, you make a stack of them. And then you're going to poke it through the middle hole that you made on your girl. And then you're going to spread out the back of the brad. So now you can arrange your petals and see it when they're closed and or down at the bottom. I like those round ones to be, they make a really nice skirt like that and that creates her skirt. When you fold them up, I fold up all the big ones to cover the girl's face and arms like this. And it hides her and then I move these up just a touch like this to cover her arms and then you've got the flower in the flower pot. So there's your flower pot ready to be added to your art journal page and then when you move the petals down you reveal Sunflower Suzette and you create her petal skirt. super cute. I hope you like this. It's just so much fun. And then you can see all that dimensional stuff that I did to the center of the flower. She just looks super, super cute. So she's ready to go on an art journal page. And now what I'm doing is coloring this sheet and I'm going to uh, color the faces, cut out all these little petals. And and I'm going to take some yellow cardstock in different colors and I'm going to use these templates. There are templates different sizes. I'm going to run my uh, scraps through embosser plates to make some embossing texture on the cardstock and then use these templates to cut out some uh, embossed petals. Once I do that and cut all this out, I'll come back and we'll put together an art journal page using our cute sunflower Suzette and her little sunflower friends. So I'm just going to add two to the page and I've colored these faces. So this is what I did with the faces and I ran some scraps of cardstock through my little um, texture boutique by Sizzix to make some patterns. So if you can see the patterns and then I'm going to use these templates to cut out some more petals that'll have some texture to them. 
So I have them all cut out. These are the ones with texture. I think they look kind of fun. And I'm going to take some Distress ink and do some distressing on these edges. And you can go over the top of the texture lightly and make the texture pop. Look, oh, I love that. I love that. So I'm going to just go around these edges, even on the colored ones, I'm going to do distress all the way around to get rid of the white edge and to add just a little cast shadow. I'm going to do that on all those and then I'll come back and show you my page idea. Now I think I'm going to take my little sponge and some distress ink and go around these petals. It just adds such a nice little touch. So even though they're already in place, I can still add a little bit around some of the edges. Okay, now I'm ready to move on to my page and I decided to do a loose leaf, uh, work in my loose leaf journal instead of my Ranger Dilutions journal. I found this ready to bloom. It was in an article in the current Allure magazine and I just love that as a theme or title for this page. So I'm gonna go ahead and tear this out to add this as my title. I just think it's gonna be super cool on this page. I love the writing. Actually, I think I'm going to leave that side squared off like that and put it on the page like this. I love that. So I'm going to use matte gel medium and apply this to the page. There are lots of brands of matte gel medium. My favorite is Tri Art. And what I like to do is to put a layer on the back side of the magazine image, just a thin layer. And I've shown this before, but if you're new to my videos, this is the best way to get a nice smooth magazine image on your page. And then I put a layer on the page itself and then combine the two. Trying to get that right to the edge. There we go. And then smooth it down. Go over the top, kind of pressing it out so that it gets any air out of the back side and any wrinkles, if there are any. Okay. That's pretty good and it's on there nice and flat and now I'm going to let that dry. Next I'm going to take some white gesso and a palette knife and I'm going to just add some gesso and I'm kind of scraping up into the edge of the magazine piece and this will connect it with the page. I don't want perfect lines. And that's all I think if I do this like I have envisioned in my head, it'll create a little bit of clouds in the background too. Okay, so I'm going to let that gesso dry. Magazine images can be tinted and I'm using an Arteza real brush pen to do a little bit of tinting to change this and make it a little blue because my background is going to be blue. You can also do it with watercolors. This is kind of a watercolor ink that's in this brush. This is just going to lightly... Watercolor um, to me would be a little bit too wet on this. So this is kind of a dry brushing with this brush. And it's just to make that background be blue. 
so it's kind of more like sky. Now I'm going to take my brayer and some blue paints and brayer on some blue paint onto the background. I love how it picks up the texture in the um, gesso that I applied. I love that. So it kind of makes it look more sky-like, I guess. makes for a fun and interesting little background. I'm taking two colors of green and a damp sponge and I'm going to just sponge it at the bottom here. are so much fun to put together because I like to vary up the size of the petals and then I also like to take a handle of a paintbrush and do my little shaping technique to really give them some shape so I shape them and make them not flat and then I just put a little bit dot of glue and start gluing them around so I lay them all out first and then glue them so once I get the petals shaped and have it laid out the way I want it, then I just start applying glue and putting them on. And I do like to uh, layer them, as you can see, one over the top of the other. So the ones that you want up front, you obviously want to glue those on first. Glue those in first. The ones that you want in the forefront. And then you're going to glue the other ones behind. So this one's going to go up here at the end of the word bloom. This one's going to go down here. And because I don't want to cover up that word bloom, this one's going to go a little bit off the page. But what I did for that petal, so it doesn't cover up the word, is I glued two petals together and then uh, fix the edge so it's not white. And then I'm going to um, roll it over, work it and roll it over and have it be a bent petal so that it won't cover up the word bloom and it'll just have some really cool shape to it. And you see the decorated side coming through the other side instead of it being white on the back. So it's going to go like that, which is super cute. So that's where my flowers are going to go. And I'm going to glue them into place and glue my girl into place. I'm not gluing her head because I want her to turn. So I'm only going to put glue right here on the back and on the bottom of the flower pot to put her into her place. And when I put glue on the back of the flowers, I'm only putting it in the middle because I don't want to glue down those petals that I've curled. And for this one, to make it fit the page, instead of just cutting these off straight, 
with the edge of my art journal page. I think what I'm going to do is just make those petals shorter. So I'm going to just trim them shorter in a petal shape to make them fit along the edge of that page a little bit better. You know, that's what's fun about paper arts and paper piecing is it's just paper. So you can shape it, trim it, and I'm just making them a little bit shorter. on that edge. And just a touch more. There, that makes her fit much, much, much better. So what I like to do next is to bend these up a little bit. I put my brush underneath and bend them and then put a dot of glue underneath the tip and glue it down. And I don't do all of them, I just do a few. But those little bends just add so much fun and interest to your petals. So see how dimensional that is on the page. This one too, I did the same thing. And now I'm going to do the same thing with just a couple of the petals on her flower. Just bend them a little bit and glue the tip of the petal down just to give it more shape. this one. Let's do this one. The old paintbrush trick. It works great. And maybe the one back here behind her head. Let's do that one a little bit. I think I'll glue this one flat. Perfect. Perfect. Next I'm going to take some green embroidery floss, three strands, and make some pieces that are braided. And the easiest way to do that is to take the three strands and to tie a knot in the end, a simple knot, and then use masking tape to tape the knot down to your workspace and then you can easily braid these strands. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'm going to make two of them and then I'm going to show you what I'll do with it. When I'm done braiding I just make a knot at the other end. So now I have a nice long braided piece to use. I've put my self-healing mat behind my page and I'm going to take my X-Acto blade and I'm going to make a cut right along the edge of her face, right at the base. And next I'm going to take a pair of tweezers and I'm going to go from the back side where that little slit is and poke my little tweezers through the hole, through the slit. And I grab the embroidery floss, see if you can see that in the tweezers, and pull it through to the back side just like that. And pull that knot till it comes through and then I'm going to secure it with a piece of tape. And if you don't want it to have that little knot lump in the back, you could cut it off. It doesn't matter. So now I've got that coming out the front and that's going to be my stem for my flower. And I'm going to just take some art glitter glue and lay this out in a fun manner and glue it down to the page. So here's how I glued my stem and I had this one coming off the side of the page. When you get to the end, the best thing to do is just put some glue on your floss where you're going to cut it. 
and just give it a minute or two to let it dry and then you can cut that off and I'll have this other piece to use over here and it won't fray or separate. So here's what my braided stems look like. I added the leaves and there's nothing cuter than a braided stem. I love that on an art journal page. So next I'm going to take some uh, charcoal pencil and my little brush here that I've cut off and made a little scrubber out of and I'm going to go underneath the flower pot and do some charcoal and then spread it out. I know a lot of people love Stabilo, but I like charcoal better. I love how it looks on the page. I think it's easier to blend out. Look how cute that is to make a little shadow. I'm going to do a little bit of a shadow along the edge here. And that's just so cute on the flower pot. And here is my completed page. So ready to bloom. I have dimensional cute face flowers with braided flower stems and then Susie sunflower where the sunflower blooms and it turns into her dress with her cute little movable head super fun. I love this page. It turned out so cute. It was so fun to create. And I want to say thank you again to Marcella Carbone. It's his original idea. Um, he did make the pot into a Rolode altered Rolodex card and I will link the video for his greenhouse with a beautiful Rolodex fairy that hides in the same manner and um, his Instagram account so that you can see his beautiful artwork. So thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this and um, there's a link in the description box below for where you can buy both of these digital printouts if you're interested in creating this art journal page for yourself in your art journal. I hope you're making art today and having a great day because art soothes the heart and makes us so happy inside.